Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm going to talk about um, birefringence, which is the word that came up last time when we talked about polarization mode dispersion. PMD is an important uh, distortion. It's got the word dispersion in it, which we know refers to the fact that two things are going at different speeds. Um, but in this case, it's the two different polarizations, not the different colors of light. So polarization, like we said last time, no need to repeat it, is, um, can be one of two states, either uh, up and down in this direction or back and forth in that direction. And the problem is that those two polarizations don't travel at the same speed. So um, I think you'll be able to see this figure more clearly. I hate to zoom in and out. It might mess everything else up. So um, let me try to draw on it. Here at the bottom here, there's an input pulse. All right. But that pulse could be in this direction polarized that way, or it could be polarized in the other direction, or it could be some mixture of the two. Now, if both of these polarizations are going at different speeds, then down here, they don't overlap so well. Right? One fell behind the other because one of these axes is slower, one of the polarizations is slower, so that has the effect of kind of spreading out my pulse, as you see here, right? And so as you go further and further down the fiber, these fall further and further behind each other, and my, it spreads out my, com my composite pulse at the receiver, All right? So that's PMD, and um, the normal dispersion we talked about in these notes is called group velocity dispersion. The normal dispersion, our old friend. So, is managed. Once that's been taken care of, PMD is the limiting factor. It becomes the dominant distortion. Single mode fiber will support both polarizations can propagate in that, and then um, this word by anisotropy, nice word, huh? <laughs> um, I'm not going to simplify it much, but we're going to call that birefringence. There aren't enough simple words around, I guess. It's the fact that um, two different polarizations go at two different speeds. Okay. This, in this fancy write-up, it could be produced by the core being elliptical rather than circular, or um, you put some kind of stress on the fiber that makes the crystal axes, uh, one has a different speed than the other. I don't need more abbreviations. I never saw anybody talk about that. I've seen this one, differential group delay. Um, different speeds are going to mess you up. Right? Uh, it's broadening it. We said that another way of saying that one pulse can fall on top of the other is um, often called intersymbol interference. I do see that abbreviation a lot, ISI. Uh, one pulse interfering with the next pulse. Um, current state-of-the-art systems do not utilize uh, polarizations as different channels. So, diversity, like an antenna diversity, uh, means I use it as a different channel. So not separate channels. But they could be if we could control them, right? And 
just like sine and cosine. See how everything connects with everything else. And I spend a lot of time trying to make it so that this lecture leads off on that point and then that point comes up again in the next one. Sine and cosine gave us uh, all kinds of neat little things we could do with coherent modulation schemes. Polarization could do that too, right? And in fact, people have been setting word, world records recently in optical telecom um, by doing this, by using the two polarizations as separate channels. Um, but it's not used in the industry, throughout the industry at the moment, but uh, it's done in the labs and it's done by, you know, big experiments where companies want to say, hey, we hold the world's record now because we did this. You can see the advantage of that right now, right? And in fact, that's what we've talked about, sine and cosine, as if they were two different polarizations, because it's easy to visualize it that way, right? We already talked about this uh, channel crosstalk stuff. So let's get back into what's, what's all this birefringence about? Okay, give me some more details on that. All righty, I'll do that. And I'm thinking I'll send out some pre-lecture notes on this because it's fun for you to play along, sing along with Mitch. <laughs> no, I'm not really that old, am I? I'm only my hair. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I saw a lot of reruns, let's put it that way. Um, birefringent material. I also try to color code things so that you know what's a key and it, it helps and what's kind of a little side comment. Um, EG is for example, in case you ever have to deal with these things, um, lithium niobate is a very useful material that has is really good at doing these things. So almost all these devices are made in lithium ion. So there's its chemical thingy, and here's its uh, English thingy, not a whole beat. Very popular. Maybe you've heard of other crystals like KDP and ADP. Um, this guy works a lot better. Um, so, we have these two different polarizations, maybe a field along the x direction, maybe an electric field along the y direction, and we're propagating, and I use wiggle for propagation, k vector tells us which way direction we're propagating, that would be along the z axis. Propagating along z, then my two polarization states coincide with the x-axis and the y-axis. So we're going to have it so that the x component has a speed, v specs, and the y component has a different speed. Call it v sub y. So let's take a look at z equals zero at the input to this birefringent material. Then um, say at that point uh, e x and e y are in phase. In phase means when one's up, the other's up too. If one's cosine, the other's cosine. One's sine, the other's sine. So, for example, um, these are both being cosine. Oops, cosine. These are easier to draw it. Okay. This one and this one. There's no phase shift between them. In phase. That's what that means. Right. So, when um, the field along the x direction goes up, the field along the y direction is also up. Okay. And when 
this one comes down and goes through zero, so does the other one. And when they both go to minus, minus, then I'm over here. Okay. So this is um, called linear polarization. Because it traces out a line. Right? Both up, they go up to there, and they both come down to zero, and both go negative, so it goes back and forth like that. linear polarization. Make sense? Good. At some later distance, z, what happens? One's going to fall behind the other one. So as we propagate down through this crystal, started out with linear polarization, now it's going to change. Right? It's going to change to where one's behind the other. Um, let's say, this is not real crucial, but let's say um, the y-axis is the slow axis. So it's V sub x is a smaller velocity. Anyway, they're going to fall out. Of it. One's going to—they're no longer going to be in phase. And at some point, it's going to give me what's called circular polarization. And it looks like this. Here, I'm going to have the x part could look like cosine, and the y part could look like sine. So let me draw this. Cosine zero, something like that. Just a function of time. And sine, the y component, has been delayed. So take cosine and delay it, and you end up with sine. in the details. The important part is they started out, they were both in phase, but one falls behind the other. Right? So at some thickness, this is going to make it so that this one's 90 degrees behind the other one in phase, or in time, if you want to call it that. All right, so what is the polarization, what's the field vector trace out now at this point? At this particular z. Then um, when one is, let's see, at t equals zero, I'm cosine. Cosine is peak. Okay, and I'm pointing along x. And the y component, I don't have any. Sine of zero is zero. So at t equals zero, I'm here. Later, at this time, sine is peak, so the y component will be peak, and at that point in time, cosine is zero. So I don't have any x-axis then. So it's going to trace out a circle. In between these two distances, a line can only change into a circle if it goes through an ellipse, right? So what happens in the in-between cases, in case you want to know, is this line morphs into an ellipse along this direction until that ellipse has both y and x components the same size, turns it into a circle. Let's call this uh, phase between the two 
don't defeat. So the phase shift, or phi sub delta. In other words, at some phase shift between the two is how much? 90 degrees. Then I'll get, I will have changed linear polarization into circular polarization. Another word for 90 degrees is pi over 2. And if I look at the thickness, that would require, if that was, if z equals 0 is where I started, then it's not too difficult to figure out that, oh, this is uh, 90 degrees, what's that in terms of a wavelength? That's a quarter of a wavelength. Hence, if I build a device that does this, it's called a quarter wave plate. So there's a device you can buy called a quarter wave plate. And if you input linear polarization of light into it, out comes circular polarization. How does it work? It works this way. It uses so-called birefringence of the media. It's some magic crystal by which polarization along one axis is slower than the polarization along the other axis, so they fall behind and it changes linear into circular. Kind of cool, huh? yeah. Well, let's go another. Make this twice as thick. quarter wave plates and put one on top of the other. I'm going to abbreviate quarter wave plate. Some people call that a half wave plate because a quarter wave plus a quarter wave gets me a half a wave. Lambda over two would be the thickness. So I could make this with one crystal, or I could make one quarter wave plate as one crystal, one device, and then just add another one on top of it. Okay, what happens now? Well, I'm going to have a phase shift between these two is now 90 degrees. Here, phi sub delta. 90 plus 90 would be 180 degrees. So now they're out of phase this way. One of these on whatever time, whatever you want to put t equals zero at, looks like a cosine. X is doing that, and Y is doing this. Makes it opposite. The zero crossings are still the same. But when one of these is up, the other one's down. Oops. Okay. So I'll draw that again. There's a sine wave. Put t equals zero wherever you want. But the point is, you know, relative phase shift between the two is 180 degrees. So when one of these is plus, the other one is minus. Okay. So 
So when this one's up, this one's down, when this one's down, this one's up. What's that going to trace out here? Yeah, it's going to be linear, but instead of both being up at the same time, getting me here to this corner, now when this one's up, the other one's down. It brings me to that corner. Okay. They both go through zero at the same time. And then likewise, when this one goes up positive, the other one's going to be negative. It's going to add up to being over there in that corner. Okay. So it's still linear polarization, but it's perpendicular to the linear polarization that we started with. Right? So there are two polarizations I can have. You can call it polarized this way, right and left, then this one's polarized up and down. They are orthogonal. They're perpendicular. So yep, it's linear, but can I abbreviate perpendicular as a abbreviation perpendicular to the input. Pretty cool, huh? I thought long and hard about, well, should I spend more time on nonlinearities or get into quantum communications or so many interesting topics in optical communications. And I thought, you know, I, this, this, is, this is pretty slick. And uh, it has a bigger impact on the industry at the moment than uh, some of those other things, which I'll still talk about. Anyway, this is this makes the best homework for you guys too, for you folks also. Um, so I could go. Th I can change with one quarter wave plate. I could change linear polarized in that direction to circular polarized. Add another quarter wave plate, and I've changed it to linear polarized in the opposite direction. Now there's this business of handed, which I'm going to do in green because it's not as important. But um, x cross y gives me z. I'm to say aside, but I won't. This is why you got to watch it as a movie. <laughs> Started out nice and simple, didn't it? Uh, layer after layer, you got to watch the video x cross y equals z, this one is actually, would be, um, put your thumb along the direction of propagation, use your right hand, do these match up? Yeah, my fingers are pointing in the direction of how this thing is moving around the circle. This one, therefore, would be called right-handed circular polarization. Go through another quarter wave plate. Where do you get to? You guessed it. Linear has to change back to circular. Right? Or wave plate. Then um, it's going to be circular. But again, it's perpendicular one two quarter wave plates away. So this one's right handed, this other one's going to be left handed. You can do it with this also. Right? Go through the same argument if you want and you'll see, yep, indeed, that's got to move around in that direction. Right? The arrows are going this way now. thumb along the z-axis, which is where we were propagating, along the z 
is coming out of the page, right, then um, that's X and that's Y. Put my thumb along there. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, I have to use my left hand now. Okay, put my thumb along the direction of propagation. Now the fingers on my left hand are giving me the direction of the circle. So this one would be called left hand circular polarization. Pretty slight. Wow. I've learned a lot in a very short time. Okay, now let's put that to work. So here's an application of all of that. Go ahead. I'm recording. Go ahead. Here's an application of all that, which is an optical isolator. Okay, so start with some random state of polarization, perhaps. A lot of lasers, they don't they don't produce any particular polarization, so maybe it's linear this way, maybe it's linear that way, maybe it's linear that way, whatever. And so you draw that like that, and this propagates along. Now I'm going to put it through a polarizer. Okay, so it makes it a definite polarization now along the direction of the polarizer propagating along here. Let's put it through a quarter wave plate. Linear turns into circular. Right? And depending on the um, which axis is the facts, fast axis and all that is going to determine whether it's right or left based on what was going on here relative to the fast and the slow axis of the quarter wave plate. But I definitely know that um, linear is going to turn into circular. If it's circular this way and it's propagating in that direction, then I can see uh, that one's right-handed. Right. So if I want to get fancy, get in the fine print, you know, um, and say, okay, that's right-handed circular polarized. Now, have that bounce off of a mirror so there's some kind of reflection. So it comes back. And I just changed the direction of the k vector. So if that one was right handed, this one's left handed. Fine print. Um, go through another quarter wave plate. What am I going to get out here? through that. Uh, it's equivalent to going through two of these quarter wave plates, right? So it's going to go back to linear, of course. Circular came in. Now it's going to come linear. It's going to be linear perpendicular to this one, right? I still have my polarizer here. So does any of it get through? Nope. Polarizer is going to block that. We get nothing coming out on the other side. Okay. So that's called an isolator. Now, the engineers will know that there's something called an opto isolator, which is different. It's a LED and a photo detector that's used to isolate ground loops um, because it uses some optics They're called opto isolators, unfortunately. <laughs> because optical isolator really means this. So opto isolator to you know somebody at Radio Shack is something different than an optical isolator. So as a thinking of this thing as a device, I have just a polarizer and a quarter wave plate put together. 
makes something called an isolator. And these always have an arrow on them, on the actual device and also in a, in a schematic. And it makes it so I can launch a wave in this direction down a fiber. You can buy isolators that are in fiber and those nice little packages that you just put them together like tinker toys, like coaxial cables. Right? And then I'm going through presumably fiber and then I've got some other device here. Anytime I go into some other device, I could get a reflection. So this thing can work like a mirror. So on the return path, here I've got a, something coming back at me. So maybe I had a laser over here on the left. I'm trying to go into some more fiber optical equipment, but I'm going to get a reflection. If that reflection comes back into my laser, it could damage my laser. But many reasons why I don't want that guy coming back here. So without the isolator, I've got something coming back at me, and I'm in trouble. But with the isolator, it gets blocked. Right? And it's nothing more than a polarizer in front of a quarter wave plate. That builds an isolator. Okay. Cool. Now to make it even cooler. Let some. Um, Zoom in on Agarwal's text, and he's got a picture of a real EDFA. Or being built fiber amplifiers, seven point two. You really have learned a lot. Um, take a look. In comes a signal. Right, and you can read the read this better in the in the um, scan. But here's an opto isolator. It's the first thing it goes through, and then it's going through. This is an EDFA. This is a fiber amplifier. And this, my friends, yep, it all connects back to everything you learn. This is my preamp. So I go through my lowest noise figure amplifier first, if they have roughly the same gain. LD stands for laser diode. This is a, it says 0.98 microns. This is 980 nanometers. This is my pump. Right, so I'm at 1550 nanometers, the wavelength of my pump laser diode has to be bigger than that. You know what couplers are, right? And this is a WDM coupler. You know what that means. Here's a symbol for erbium doped fiber. This is just fiber with the erbium in it. So that's um, the where I get my amplification, right? But that's one stage, then I go through another opto optical isolator that keeps any waves in here and the next stage from bouncing back and messing me up. We'll talk about some of this amplified spontaneous emission noise more. I mentioned it like the first day a little bit, but um, we'll, we'll keep talking even after, you know, the homework and the exams are done. We'll do a there, there's more lecture time. So um, here's my next stage. It's a power amplifier. Right? This one is where I really want to boost it up, have more gain, put my lower noise figure one in front. Now look how these are arranged. This one has the uh, forward pumping. This pump goes in the same direction as my signal is coming in, right? So as I look down the erbium doped fiber, the pump power comes in and it starts to get gobbled up. So it decays down like that. This one uses forward and backward pumping. 
it's got one on both ends. Right? So this pump comes in that direction, this pump comes in that direction. So because of that, then it's more of a uniform pumping. This one decays in that direction, this one decays in that direction. You add them up and it's more like a constant. Okay. So that's what you typically do when you have the really higher gain power amplifiers. But you certainly don't want, and um, apparently 980 nanometer pump is lower noise figure than these guys. These are both at um, 1480 nanometer pumps, pump laser diodes. Um, what else can we see here? Well, I probably don't want all this and all the noise, we said every amplifier has its own internal noise, more on that later. No, it doesn't have to be on an exam. Well, we can learn beyond the exams, right? <laughs> um, there's a whole bunch of this optical noise that I don't want it going back into here, right? And who knows what would happen if this 1480 nanometer pump were allowed to go all the way back into this one. Ew. That could mess it up, right? Because if this is a higher gain, noisier stuff, I don't want it coming back into my preamp, right? So I use these optical isolators. And you know all about those now. Lucky you. All right. Enjoy.